Jackson State, the Tigers in their road blues underway from one of the two courts set up inside the Alamo Dome. Yeah, and Beth, I'm excited. I know the players are excited. We're talking about the reigning champs, but there was no tournament last year, so they are the reigning champs from the season and a half ago. And, and she does a lot of her work down there in the paint, as you see, getting the steal, getting out. The Euro step off the window for Melissa Smith. And here, just look at the defense, not staying behind, getting around, then getting out. Look how fast she knows the ball's coming to her. Melissa gets out to the race. A very good defensive team and a very good rebounding team this season. Those are their calling cards. Can they score against Baylor? A big story today. And if you're Jackson State, those layups, those fast break opportunities, you have to take advantage of them because you're not going to get a lot of easy looks against the Baylor defense. Jackson State's running through their offensive plays. It's hard to score on Baylor, so you're going to have to get into the third, fourth, fifth option in your offense. Good putback there. Offensive rebound and the stick back by Amisha Williams, senior out of Gulfport, Mississippi. It does, and that Baylor length, I'm going to talk about it a lot because it's hard to score on long athletic players. Nice ball fake there by Moon. And also number one, the overall top seed in the tournament, Stanford, late night tonight on ESPN. As Smith does her thing on their run towards a two seed and one of the favorites in the postseason again this year. Yeah, and for Didi to come back after such an... How about 11 straight titles? They have just dominated the Big 12 Conference as Urson hits on the inbounds play. A great conversation this week with Kim Mulkey, who was urging her, not, maybe nudging her a little bit, hey, how about you be more of a three? And she said, yeah. <laughs> that gives them confidence. Well, the same happens for the number one seeds. If they see a number one go down, it kind of makes them tighten up. Like, okay, we don't want that to be up, guys. <laughs> Goodness, Moon. And Good deep balls here, Renee. Yeah, Moon Urson, as you talked about, it could have been in slow motion. Finding her. That one of Mr. Smith, and either one of them has missed a shot. They came ready to play. Oh, banging in another three. That's the Stanford transfer, Dijanae Carrington, the grad student out of San Diego. To line up her shot and then look at Smith finding the open man and another one. Another three goes down. They get out and run. We were talking to Kim Mulkey and she talked about that. They like to run and gun. Final seconds of this first quarter and the lay-in for two more. Jackson State's got to hustle. They check the clock. Yeah, you want to get a shot off. And it is blocked by Carrington. 29-10, Baylor have won 22 of the 38 women's NCAA titles. All together in the Riverwalk region and on the run for the lane, Jordan Oliver, Iowa with Caitlin Clark. Oh yeah, Clark put on a show today. Mm. Good block down low. That's great defensive effort, two plays in a row. Janiah Talley brings it across midcourt, and then the pull-up is good from Janiah Covington, the junior out of Starkville. That's impressive just what the Jackson State uh, team has had to overcome. Obviously, the, the COVID situation for all the teams. You may recall that uh, bitter winter storm that blasted yeah. across uh, Texas and a lot of the southeast actually uprooted them from their homes in the couple of buckets in a row here for Jackson State. And that's what I was going to say. They put a little run together here. And, and then that's a turnover, but that's okay. Keep playing. Run out from Moon Urson. Off the miss. Rebound and run. Look at the length of Smith and Run. And I like the Jackson State energy. I, they had a burst there where they went and scored three in a row. My goodness, Baylor, they are sending everything that comes in their way. But you gotta show And these players have really em embraced the opportunity, Renee, to, to play with those guys in mind as Carrington anticipates well. He gets an easy two buckets right there by Carrington. Excellent in the WNBA. Went on to have a career in the WNBA. But yeah, Baylor, it's unfinished business for them. Good second and third chances there. Williams gets the finish. Moon Urson, they have 15 fast break points. Jackson State, and uh, oh, there's another block. That's the, That's the second one. 
And that's exactly right. When you're playing against the Baylor defense, you have to move the ball to get them moving. Urson cleaning it up. She's doing everything right now. The all-defensive team, we've seen two blocks already. A couple steals from her. There goes another block right there by Dee Dee. And I was just about to bring that up because I, I heard it bounced your it bounced your bracket, didn't it? <laughs> uh, had Illinois in the final. Ouch. <laughs> and I talked about this earlier with the Baylor team, and it looks like another easy basket here for Carrington. Oh, look at the body control to go up one-handed with the left. is not the go-to here for the final shot. Jones off the pump. Got it. Chanel Jones knocks it down. And now Carrington good if it goes. And I'm going to go with the other power <laughs> index. And I'm going to say that I'm, I'm predicting UConn as well. Um, but, again, there's three teams at the top, four teams at the top, who any, it's anyone's game. NC State is the other number one seed, and so is South Carolina. South Carolina's coming up next on ESPN. And then UConn will follow them. We are thrilled to be a part of uh, history today with the first women's tournament games on ABC. Keep going. That's what I talk about. That's how you show respect for the game. You keep playing, and they got to still there. Jackson State's not going to stop. They're going to continue to come at Baylor. So Baylor's going to have to play all, all 40 minutes of the game. Williams now with a double-double, and Jaria Covington follows that up. She's got six points and a couple of assists. And they have come out of the locker room inspired. Tough pass from Melissa Smith to try and handle. Oh, and the Tigers give it right back. Urson off the mark. That's just her second miss today. Cleaned up nicely by Trinity Oliver. In the sense of how you're hustling. Got two steals, actually, in that one possession, but couldn't get it past the half-court mark. Oh, what an athletic play by Smith to follow. This was a Baylor program that uh, was not successful before her arrival. Longtime assistant at Louisiana Tech where she played. And an and one here and a flex. But to do it on this level at this stage, 20 points in the first half, that's what you want out of your point guard leader. Wide open on the block. Riverwalk region. The entire tournament coming your way from Texas. You've got the Riverwalk, the Mercado, the Hemisphere, and the Alamo regions. Double figures for Dijon A. Carrington. It's a double-double for Amisha Williams for Jackson State. 12 points and 10 rebounds. And it is looking... Jackson State uh, is flying around the... They're, uh, they're shooting five of nine in this, uh, now five for ten in this third quarter. Smith going coast to coast, and one. A true S-curve without any reason uh, for geography considerations or any home games in the first and second round. Stepping right into her shot for two more because UConn, Tennessee, and Baylor are all together in the same region. Count them up. That's 22 of the 38 national championships awarded to those three programs. With uh, any kind of NCAA tournament experience, it's a, a bit of a new feel for the Huskies with a young group as Urson will now have a new career high, 24 for Moon, and possibly a date with Stanford in the second round for them. Cardinal face Utah Valley later tonight. Still some Pac-12 after dark, even in the NCAA tournament on ESPN. So then you get to see who you're matching up against. If it's a Stanford or a Baylor, you don't get as excited as you do <laughs> any other time. Or a UConn, and Jackson State put together a little 4-0 run right here. Is a stud in the starting lineup for the card. That's what you call athletic genes right there. We've been chalk, by the way, so far on opening day. All the favorites are winning, but uh, if you're uh, on, on your guard play, on your ability to be poised, 
the, the great Pat Summit always talked about defense and rebounding is what wins championship. And on the defensive side, if you can be disruptive. You know, as you can see, Coach Moki is still, she's still coaching on the sideline. She still has that energy. That's that championship mentality I was talking about. They are studying the scouts, watching film. Their heads are in the books, per se, all week long. Yeah, and in most instances, as Bickle tries for three and hits it. That's one of uh, six Pac-12 teams. ACC leading the way with eight teams in the tournament. Five for the Big 12. Yep, sorry. This team is deep. And when we talked to Kim Mulkey this week, she said the teams that can stay healthy, can stay COVID-free, obviously, was at Middle Tennessee. They lost today to Tennessee. Yeah, you, you just need a list of certified bucket getters. So, yeah, you have to play some defense to be in this region for sure. They went through those same film sessions that the starters went through. So you want to see them get a taste of the March Madness and the big dance. To get into the NCAA tournament, SWAC okay. championship. And there's a two-pointer there within one. Thinking, reconsidering HBCUs in a sense of there's talent there now. It's not that under-talented, underfunded that you've seen before as they knock in a three. And they played great today. Very impressive for the two seed in the Riverwalk region. They will advance to the second round.